Don, I'd like to get your, uh, feed, your feedback, whatever your thoughts about you know, the Alcyon data, data in combination with BMP, impressive result. Do you think malformation is still a place uh, in our, like the treatment of our patients? What are your thoughts? Well, I'm not a big oral melphalan fan. Uh, I think it has a place for now for high-dose therapy. I don't know of any other agent that can, in high doses, produce an unmaintained remission of a year and a half or so. But for chronic repetitious use, uh, I think it's a hard drug to get in because of the cumulative marrow damage. It is one of the alkylating agents with more than less leuco Le leukemogenic potential, and I think in North America and Canada, in particular, oral cyclophosphamide has pretty much replaced uh, melphalan, at least in the academic centers. There are exceptions. Another disadvantage of melphalan is even though there are dose adjustments for oral administration, they're not well worked out, and there's a lot of variability on how you give the drug in someone with renal failure. So I think as the field has advanced, our, our experience has advanced in treating myeloma, that this mainstay of treatment three decades ago has a limited role. It's the short answer. Yeah, and I'm afraid we are all thinking about toxicity. Mm. When you were talking, I was thinking about 25% incidence of infection in neutropenia. So I think it's all related to what you're saying. It's not an easy drug to give. Um, but what you, are you said in Eastern Canada, you still use a lot of BMP. We, um, we've switched to RD, actually. So on, on study for the last decade or so, it's been, it's been RD. Um, our approval is officially RD or VMP, um, and we'll tend to use Cyborg D if it's renal dysfunction, um, which I think most most people in Canada do. Um, I think one of the dilemmas we'll have is if that's our access to daratumumab first line. I was um, about to say. Do, mm -hmm. do we go ahead with uh, Dara VMP? Will there be a possibility of using, for example, Dara Cyborg D um, in Canada as a, as a first line um, combination? And uh, we were chatting earlier about the Maya data. Um, I think mm -hmm. really we're all waiting for DARA RD to become uh, available in Canada. I think the DARA VMP established the principle that you can add a monoclonal antibody safely to an established uh, regimen. Um, but the better partner, obviously, is an immunomodulatory derivative. I think we may have the same issue, but the MCRN database analysis that showed in real world that VMP gave basically the identical outcome as Cyborg D, we will use to hopefully push for funding of that alternative. And our institution at least lets us freely substitute Cyborg D for VMP. But until that data came out, I always had reservations whether they were equivalent in any tumor effect or whether we were sacrificing better toxicity profile uh, or getting a better uh, toxicity profile but compromising the anti-myeloma effect. And I, I don't think we are uh, when you use cyclophosphamide in combination with other agents. It's interesting because, <laughs> and I, f I feel like I'm getting old when I say it, but the VMP part, the melphalan, there's a whole generation of Canadian hematologists that will have never ever used it. So if you're having, fair enough, <laughs> the youngins over here. But if you're thinking about, it, it's comparable backbone that most of our landscape has never used, and then you're adding daratumumab on top of that, it makes it really difficult to manage side effects and dose adjustments when it's a lot of new medications you're not used to dealing with. So I certainly hope you're right with the MCRN database and the equivalents that we'd be able to use that first line cyborg D backbone thinking they're equivalent for us in the way we kind of treat patients now in Canada. Well, Daryl and I probably have uh, more experience using melphalan, but I would ask him, I never start out with the nine milligram per meter squared dose of melphalan ever. I have had with the first cycle, people become pancytopenic for weeks or months mm -hmm. and that there was not a compelling reason that that happened. And, you know, that fear factor, I always dose way under. And because of seeing that sort of phenomenon happen more than once. So yeah, I don't no, know. I, I agree entirely. Um, you know, I think the only time I've really used 9 milligram per meter square 
was uh, on clinical trials where we're forced um, to, to do that or, or the patient doesn't go on study. Um, but I've had exactly the same experience as you that uh, you may cause neutropenia very early and then it's prolonged. Um, so if, if we end up uh, needing to use Melflan again orally, um, generally what I what I first line is started at about half yes. the, uh, the dose that, that one would calculate and then increase. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I do think there's something to causing uh, mild neutropenia mid-cycle and then you, you know you're at the right dose. Um, but, but not overdoing it to begin with, I think, is, is key. I think the other problem with that is, is, and that's what Bob Kyle used to say, you need to get enough marrow suppression to know you're getting enough drug into your patient and hopefully killing the plasma cells. But then there's the chronic myelosuppression at the end of nine months. Your patient never has a platelet count over 100. Your patient never has a neutrophil count over 1.3, and I think that undermines their subsequent treatment. Mm -hmm.